we are going to conclude uh, section 2.4 with a couple of examples that are a little, little trickier, at least in how they look. Um, so sometimes things look worse than they really are, and this would be one of them. So example six, find the constant a such that the function is continuous on the entire real line. And sorry about that, but there's a little typo in here that x in the denominator should not be there. Okay, so let's <laughs> move forward forward with that. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is because we're um, we're seeing whether or not it's continuous really at this value in question, the zero. Because sine is always continuous and so is any linear function. But we're seeing if these two graphs, um, we want to make sure that whatever this a value is, that the two graphs actually connect together when x is equal to zero. So I'm going to plug zero into both functions. And I know some of you are going to panic again because, oh my gosh, there's no equal bar there. Like, so what? Who cares? Just plug it in. Just, just do it. So stick the zero in for x in both lines. So four sine of zero, and then in the next one, a minus two times zero. So if they connect together, then once you plug in the zero and for x, you should come out with the same value, or in other words, they should actually equal each other. So now you have an equation to solve for a. So sine of zero is zero, zero times four is zero, whoops. On the right side, negative two times zero is zero, a minus zero is a. So a is equal to zero. See, not that hard. So don't panic because it's like, oh gosh, it's a piecewise function. Like, ah, that's all right. You guys know how to deal with them. All right, example seven, find the constants a and c. Uh-oh, now you got two of them. Uh, and the same thing, so that it's continuous. <clears throat> And so two constants and three lines. All right, so we're gonna take it a piece at a time. Ha, 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 it's a piecewise function. So you, there, we have two x values in question. x equals two and then x equals four. So we're gonna start with x equals two. I'm gonna plug it in for x into the first and the second line, not the third because the third one is dealing with the x equals four. So just the x equals two. So I plug that in for x and then we get four a. Plug it in for x over here and I end up with two a plus c. And those are gonna equal each other just like they did in the previous example. So all I can really do with this is just move the two a to the left side and I end up with 2a equals c. Well, now I can work with the other place that you know might not be continuous, the four. So now I'm gonna plug the four into the second line and the third. So the second line is used twice because it's affected twice. So plug the four in for the x. So 4a plus c and then plug this four into the third line, four C minus one. And again, they're gonna, they should equal each other. So all I can do with this is really bring the C over to the right, so four A equals uh, three C minus one. Well, now you have a system of equations. You have this guy here and you have this guy here. So you can use elimination, you can use substitution. Uh, substitution is gonna work kinda, kinda nice because you already know what C equals. So we're just gonna apply it. And now I can solve for A. So I'll just swing it over to the left. So A turns out to equal one half 
So now I can plug it back in over here or even this one if I wanted. Uh, this one's faster. So if A is a half, C is one. And that will do it for section 2.4. So try the homework, uh, email me if you have questions, um, and we'll see how you do.